Look at Charlie, guys. She got groomed, you guys. Can you see her? <sighs> Hello. All right, let me make sure you can see me now. It's kind of weird lighting, but I want to do it right here. <laughs> it's just that darn window. Maybe if I turn the light on. I don't want to turn the light on. Okay, guys. Hi friends, I'm Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to talk about recent TV shows and movies I have been watching. Um, I try to do these when I have anywhere from like 12 to 20 things to talk to you about. I don't like these to be super long, so I don't really go in depth too much. I'm basically here to tell you if I recommend something or not. Um, and I always like write a few notes so I can keep everything straight in my head. So the first thing that we're going to talk about are the current TV shows that I am watching. I think all three of these are on Hulu. Yes, I am currently watching The Girl from Plainville. Um, I got this on recommendation from Jordan. Well, she really did not want to film with me. <laughs> okay. Bye, Charlie. <laughs> um it is inspired by like a true crime case about this girl named Michelle Carter that um, is doing this like texting suicide thing with her boyfriend and she basically convinces him to kill himself and yeah it's the show about that and it is crazy because just seeing it all play out like obviously it's not word for word or scene for scene what happened but it's just bizarre that this could actually happen um but it led to his death and her conviction and of involuntary manslaughter um, the acting is really good in this one. Um, it is a slower paced story. I don't remember seeing this in the news, but Jordan watched it in the news. And then when I told my husband about it, he remembers seeing it in the news. Um, but yeah, very, very interesting. Again, that is the girl from Plainville on Hulu. Um, I think I'm about like three or four episodes into that one. Um, I also, oh my gosh, this one is so fascinating to me. It's called The Deep End. And I think it just, all of the episodes just went up on Hulu. It is about this influencer spiritualist named Teal Swan. If you know anything about Teal Swan, she has a YouTube channel, there's a podcast, uh, she does these like retreats, she does conventions, she does, um, but she is a spiritual leader, um, motivational speaker, and you're in this documentary. I just started watching last night and I think I'm like four or five episodes in. It's like you're getting to see the inner workings of what she believes because honestly, I did not know anything about this woman until I started watching and it is so fascinating. Um, cultish vibes but that's kind of a whole part of the show is a lot of people call the teal tribe a cult and they're trying to rebut that and say we aren't a cult but there's a lot of mysterious things that have happened um around like suicide and stuff like that but she basically helps people with their trauma and helps them live like their most authentic lives. And it's just very interesting. If you're into that sort of thing, highly recommend. Um, and I literally have no idea where it's going to go from what I ended up on. Like every episode, I have no idea what I'm getting myself into. She's a very dynamic person um she has a large following like on facebook and stuff like that like i'm talking like she has millions of followers and she's trying to be like the number one like 
above the Pope, above the Dalai Lama, above all of these other spiritual leaders that you know and you have heard of. Um, yeah, very, very interesting. But it's about that. Um, and Doctor and her followers isolate them from their loved ones, all of that. Very interesting. And then back in March, Hulu kind of did a 90s revival type thing and they put Felicity, I think it's only the first four seasons of Felicity, but that was like one of the quintessential 90s sitcoms that every week it was on every week you were watching um I think only the first four seasons are up but I'm only like one episode in but I haven't had time to catch up with it but oh my gosh I cannot wait to watch this loved it when I initially watched it I'm loving it already on the rewatch this is about a um, graduating high schooler named Felicity Porter that um, she's kind of been, she's shy, she's kind of been sheltered a little bit by her parents. And I don't know what like small town she's from, but she's going off to college and she decides to go to a college in New York City because this guy that she had a crush on in high school, that's where he told her that he was going. So that's where she applied and she got in and she goes to college there. And it has one of the best love triangles ever um like one of the quintessential like one ep one season you're ro rooting for this guy the next season you're rooting for this guy and along the way she's just finding out like more about herself living in the big city making her own friends going to college getting a job like it's like a coming of age story um I just when I initially watched it I always remember her sitting on the end of her bed and she would record these little mini cassettes for her friend and like send them then and then friend would send some back and it was just so good it's got like coffee shop vibes college vibes like love triangle but yeah I just oh it's so nostalgic I absolutely love it anyway all right now the other shows the other tv shows that I have watched I'm not going to talk about too long the first being Heartstopper it was only eight um, episodes, absolutely loved them. If you haven't, I think the last um, what I watched was when I was going to be watching Heartstopper that night. I did watch um, episode one with my patrons and then I stayed up the rest of the night and binged the rest. It was so quick and so fast and so lovely and so wholesome. It's like a warm hug. If you need something to cheer you up, watch this. It's just as good as the graphic novels. Uh, if you don't want to like read the graphic novels, check out the web comic. Um, I cannot wait. They did announce that they're going to do a season two and a season three, I believe. And I am just so excited. I think that will kind of complete the uh, series because the fifth um, one is going to be the last installment. Also, um, the yearbook is coming, which is kind of like I don't know it's just all in this universe and I just love these characters so so much um I I would say you can watch the tv show without reading the comics but they're so comparable I mean like almost scene for scene um and I think that you will have a deeper love for the characters if you do both whether that means you watch the tv show first and then read or you read and then watch you're just gonna absolutely love it I don't think I've seen anybody say that you should not watch this show okay you guys um then I watched this like kind of mini docuseries it was called worst roommate ever and it was a set like each episode was like a different terrible roommate situation and these roommates were freaking terrible anything from like being a killer being obsessed with someone not moving out like things like that they were just crazy crazy situations um and it had kind of like that true crime documentary type feel to it um and it also just goes to show like how unsafe it is even if you try to vet a roommate um 
and how like unprotected we are with the laws about roommate situations and stuff like that. I don't know. It was crazy. I watched it a while ago, but it was super, super interesting. Um, the next one that I watched is I finally watched You Season 3, which I really enjoyed. It was a lot different than I was expecting. I've only read the first book, okay? Haven't read the second, haven't read the third. Um, not entirely sure that I'm interested because I didn't ever hear really great things about the second book. And if I don't read the second book, can I really just jump into the third? I don't know. But maybe one day I will get back into reading the books. But the TV show is so interesting you guys um don't know which season i would say is my favorite i don't know i just it's so good um and then i get obsessed with this reality show called the circle and it's about kind of like social media catfishing um popularity contest um so the circle season four was so fun they basically take i don't know how many they start with but let's say like six to eight people and you can either go into the circle as yourself or you can catfish as someone else. Um, and everybody is sequestered in their own room in this like hotel or whatever. And they only communicate through like their TVs. There's like this messaging circle chat and you create a profile of yourself. So obviously it can be like your picture with your information or it could be somebody else's picture with made up information. And you play games and you you know have conversations with people but you're basically trying to be the most popular one at the end of the show to win a hundred thousand dollars um this show there were some twists and turns that upped the prize money and it was just really really exciting i am so happy who won and yeah that's all i'm gonna say about that but if you haven't watched the circle i know there's other countries that do their own version of the circle I only watched the American one, um, but I watched all four seasons and I will watch it every year because it's so freaking fun. Um, okay, so that handles all of the TV shows. Now we're going to move into the movies. The first one is How It Ends. It's a 2018 action thriller film. It's kind of sci-fi at the same time. You basically have this man and woman, Will and Samantha. They're a young couple expecting their first child. He flies to Seattle to ask her dad to um, marry her. And Samantha and like her family, they're kind of like wealthy, you know, but Will has a really good job. I think he's like a doctor or something like that. Anyway, he flies to Seattle to ask her dad to marry her and it doesn't go well. Like the conversation just doesn't go good. Anyway, the next day he's headed back to be with his, you know, girlfriend um, and he's on the phone with her and he's having, there's like static and stuff. And then all of a sudden she hears this weird noise and then it totally disconnects. And then on the news, you're seeing that weird things are happening and stuff like that. So he ends up making his way back to Samantha's dad's house and then they are on their way to save Samantha. Um, it's very weird. It's kind of like apocalyptic, dystopian, like the start of all that. Um, yeah, it had some really thrilling, rough scenes, kind of creepy, but I actually really enjoyed that one. So I would recommend that one. The next one that I watched is called Aftermath and <laughs> It's about a young couple that's struggling to stay together. Their marriage is kind of rocky. Um, but then they get this amazing opportunity to get this house for like next to nothing. Like it's almost like basically free, but it's this really, really nice house. And you know, you're probably wondering, well, like how did they get this really good deal? Well, the house comes with a history a little bit creepy of a history and they end up moving in and then weird crazy creepy stuff starts happening this is considered horror 
And I would say, like, I watch most of my movies at night after my husband goes to bed. And I was literally creeped out watching this. There were some scenes I was like, mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> it was really, really creepy. So you don't know if this is, like, supernatural, if this is really happening, like, what's going on. Yes, um, it does have some animal things in it though like one animal thing that i didn't you know i don't like anything to do with animals just leave animals out of my movies you know unless they're living happy lives anyway <laughs> so that was that one next up is the vanished now this is the second time that i've watched this movie when jordan came to visit me um we were just chilling out one night i was like hey let's turn on a movie we watched the vanished um and this one is about a husband and a wife and their daughter they go on this camping trip and then very shortly after they get there the daughter goes missing so they call in the cops. They're asking around the campground. Nobody has seen the daughter. Uh, there was someone camped like right next door to them. They're asking. No one's seen the daughter. And there's also at the same time, there's like an escaped convent convict um, that got out of jail and is like running loose. So they're terrified that, oh my gosh, they have her daughter. The police are not making any headway. So the couple take it upon themselves to figure out who took their daughter and get their daughter back. It's crazy. Um, the filming of this one is very interesting. It has a very unique style to it, I think. Um, there are some truly unsettling things. Um, it's not like the most, well, I mean, I would recommend that one too. You know, I would, maybe not so much Aftermath because that one was just a little bit over the top, but it was creepy. If you're looking for something fast and creepy, sure. Vanished, I actually liked. Um, the next one I'm sure you've all seen, Interstellar with Matthew McConaughey. This is an almost three hour movie. It's two hours and 49 minutes. So you do have to carve out a chunk of time but it's worth it if you like sci-fi especially like space sci-fi um this is about a team of explorers traveling through a wormhole in space um in an attempt to um ensure humanity's survival it's very interesting um I didn't know if like space sci-fi would like be my thing. I'm trying to build myself up to Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir because that's gonna be my next like sci-fi book, I think. Um, and I'm kind of nervous about it. But um, yeah, I watched Interstellar and it was really, really cool. The Woman in the Window, watched this with my patrons. Um, it was okay. I absolutely loved the house that the agoraphobe was like stuck in I was like can I live in this house um it just seemed amazing um and I don't think in the film it really came across that she was agoraphobic as much as it did in the book um this is based on the book by AJ Finn but she's living alone in New York City some new neighbors moving across the street um and she notices something while she's looking out the window at them one day and it's kind of twisty and turny but I did think that the book did it better next one is senior year I thought this was hilarious um is it a uh, like great movie no not really it's just super fun it's over the top um you have it starts with this girl who's like a cheerleader and she's kind of like the it girl and she has you know she's finally she starts off as like super unpopular but she like makes a plan to become really popular and then by her senior year she's like the popular girl she's the cheer captain she's dating the coolest guy and her whole life is ahead of her well they have this pep rally and the uh, pyramid goes wrong. She ends up in a coma for like 20 years or something crazy like that. And now she, when she wakes up from a coma, she's 37 years old. And can you imagine the technology and everything that has changed in 20 years? Um, 
Could you imagine you're, you know, let's say 17, 18 years old, and then you're in a coma for 20 years, and then you wake up and you're like a fully fledged, like adult. So she still is very much like she has the body of a 37 year old, but she's very much still 17 years old, like in her heart, in her mannerisms, the way she talks and stuff like that. And one of her friends from high school is now the high school principal and she convinces her that she wants to go back to high school and like graduate and she wants to be the homecoming queen is what she wants. That's kind of like what she missed out on the first go around. So she's determined to go back to high school and like do all of that stuff. So it has some like cute messages and stuff like that, but like you've heard them all before. It's just, it's really funny if you're looking for something like that, you know, I would recommend it. All right, Intrusion. This was another like late night <laughs> watch. I don't know why I watch shows like this at night. Uh, so this one is about a husband and a wife and the husband is this architect or he has like an architect firm or something like that. He builds houses and stuff. And he built this gorgeous house for him and his wife. But it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, but they just seem like a great couple and all of that. But for some reason, it seems like they had an intrusion before or something like that, but there has been a home invasion and they actually like go out on a date night one night. And I just think it's so cute because like, they're like, yeah, let's leave our phones at home because we're going together and like, you know, why would we need our phones? So when they get back, they notice that the house is like opened. Like, I don't know. It's just really, really crazy. Also, I think I was like more scared than I needed to be because I was watching this late at night as my husband was, you know, of course, asleep and I was just watching it by myself in the dark. <laughs> Um, next up is The Call. And this reminds me a lot of that Jake Gyllenhaal movie that I've talked to you guys about. Was it called like 911 or something like that? Anyway, it is about a, it's an old movie. I think it came out 2009 or... I don't know. Am I making that up? I don't know. Anyway, it's an old Halle Berry movie and she is a veteran 911 um, operator and she gets this call um, from this girl, this teenage girl that's home alone and someone is breaking into her house. And so she's trying to help her out and the girl, they kind of figured out a way to fool the intruder and then the call gets disconnected but she does something she shouldn't. She calls the girl back and then the phone rings and then the intruder actually gets the girl. And then the next thing you know, um, they never could find her and the girl's being found. She was killed. Um, so she's kind of put on temporary, like teaching the new people how to be 911 operators because she's like really screwed up from that last call and um, I thought she was gonna like leave the business but she ended up just like teaching the new people that were coming in and stuff and then as she's taking them out on the training floor and stuff like that um, there's another teenage girl that uh, is in the process of being kidnapped and Halle Berry like snaps to it and takes over the call and it's all about that very very wild ride like one of my absolute worst nightmares ever but love Halle Berry and yeah I love her hair in this one the way it is it's just like it's such an old style haircut but I absolutely love it and love the show too super action-packed um yeah it also would help like if I'm in that situation I would kind of know what to do <laughs> um and the last one I just finished watching earlier today, it was just something to turn on. I wouldn't necessarily like recommend it, but if you're just like bored and you can't find anything else to watch, it's like a good enough, you know, show. It's called Secret Obsession. And this one is a few years old as well. I think this one's like 2016. Um, it's basically at the beginning, you're following this woman as she is running away from some person. All you can see is they're kind of like hooded and they have a knife 
and they're chasing her and it's raining and they're at like a rest stop or something like that. She's trying to call 911. Her phone's not working. She runs in the restroom and hides. She runs out to her car and you know, all this crazy stuff. Well, she ends up getting away and getting hit by a car and then she's rushed to the emergency room and now she has a little bit of amnesia, like a concussion, amnesia, all of that. Um, so when she's up, like, you know, her husband's right there in the hospital, but she doesn't remember her husband. And so it's basically like her trying to kind of figure out what happened to her. Like, how did she get into this accident? Because she doesn't remember, you know, the part where she was being chased and all of that, um, because of the concussion, amnesia, all of that. Um, so she's in the hospital for a while. Her husband's coming there every day. He's bringing photo albums by. He's doing all of the things that he should be doing. Um, I think with this one, it's a little obvious, like what's going on. But even in books that are like obvious, like even in thriller books that I read that are obvious, like what's going on, I'm still wondering, okay, how's it gonna pan out, you know? So I still really enjoyed it. It was fine for what it was. Um, and that was Secret Obsession. So I will link the movies and the TV shows down in the description box for you. Um, I would say like which ones were my favorite. Um, the best cinematic experience was probably Interstellar. Um, but again, that is a bit of a time commitment. Uh, all the other ones were just kind of like fun. They're not going to be like new favorites or anything like that. Um, but I really loved Heartstopper. Um, I, I will continue to watch you, the new seasons, The Circle. I will continue to watch those. So happy to have found that Felicity's um, on Hulu. And The Deep End is so interesting. So those are like my top recommendations. But that's what I've been watching recently. Let me know what you've been watching recently down in the comment section down below. I hope you guys still enjoy these. I know I'm not like a film critic or anything thing like that but I have fun telling you guys what I've been watching and stuff like that but anyway I'm gonna go hope you enjoyed hope you're having a lovely day or night and I'll see you guys again in another video very soon bye guys